And um, it was when I told my son, I, I kind of wanted to prepare my kids that, you know, I'm kind of done. And I'm Pretty. defeated, you know, all of that stuff. And he was so angry with me. He goes, Mom, I almost want to smack you for having said that. How, how dare you give up on yourself? Yeah. And I, I needed to hear that. It was almost like somebody had to just shake you mm. out of your self-pity kind of a thing or feeling defeated and, and, and all of that. And it's coming. Welcome, Miriam, uh, to um, our studio. Thank you. Uh, you're the Vistage Chair of uh, multiple businesses or CEOs of multiple businesses. Yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been doing this? I've been doing it for about eight years. And prior to doing that, I was actually a member myself. So I was sitting on the other side uh, trying to solve my own problems. And I just, it was the most amazing experience to be in a room with other people that um, were really there to help one another. Yes. And so I got really inspired. And then when my chair actually said, you know, I think you should, you should do this. Yeah. This, is, this is you. And I was like, I couldn't agree more. <laughs> it, was, it, was such a, it was such an honor um, to be doing this work. It's a privilege. And so I get to work with amazing people and shockingly, I get paid for it yeah. because I would have done it for free. <laughs> and um, it, it's really getting to know people, um, it, even though it's, it's, it's supposed to be a business group, I think we all come in there with the idea of how can I be a more authentic uh, version of myself? Because we all have so many masks, and I'm looking at all the masks right <laughs> behind you, and we all have all these masks yes. that we wear, uh, trying to look smart, trying to um, be successful, or trying to be tough, be a boss, etc. Yes. And it's all a mask. Yes. And so this is the one time out of the month that we can come into the group and just say, you know what, today is open kimono. No mask, I just want to be. Be real. Be real, exactly. And so many of us don't even know how to do that because we haven't done it for no. so long, you know. So, um, you are you you actually have a uh, doctorate in uh, your education. Yes, it's industrial organizational psychology. Correct. Okay. And and wh where where did, so where did you go to school? I went to school in San Diego. Okay. I was actually a math major. Uh, my yeah. No, <laughs> so you were going to the accounting field. <laughs> I was a field. total geek <laughs> at one time, <laughs> and um, but I never really did any work in you know actuaries and those kinds of things. I kind of l life kind of unfolded, and I just kind of went with it. And it took me to a whole bunch of different places, which were amazing. But I guess the end was in mind mm -hmm. when God, when I think the universe was like. Um, guiding me through all these um, avenues that really were just kind of like, why am I selling copiers yes. at Xerox? Yes. Or why am I doing, uh, why am I at IBM and all that? But there was an uh, invisible purpose behind Correct. all of it. So, where you, okay, so let's go back. Like, you, where were you born? I was born in Tehran, Iran. And, and how, how's life over there? Because that's a very <laughs> different thing that most people have a, uh, an idea of Iran as uh, it's more what they see on TV. And well, the Iran that I was raised in was so, so, so different than what it is today. OK, what it was, was it like? during the Shah and I was very blessed to have been born in a family where my dad was very educated. And so being a woman was not um, was not a curse. Okay. okay, I had two brothers, but I think my my dad favored me. <laughs> if they're listening, <laughs> my brothers never listen to this. But I mean, he he always respect, respected me as a human being, as an individual, and not about it wasn't about a gender, which was very different. So this is in your household, uh -huh. but obviously being a little yeah. different outside yes. your household. Yes, okay. and so that's where the masks had to come in. Okay. When I had to wow. okay. um, 
you know, and I, I was really bad at it, mm -hmm. but I was supposed to be more of a, uh, a wife in training, you know, right. and so yes. which meant hold your opinions to yourself, and I was very opinionated, and I still <laughs> am, but um, it was about, it really, I think it was that the whole um, growing up is how to become the perfect wife for and this is someone. this is a Middle Eastern culture, it is. which which yeah. I think a lot of them are training their their daughters to be wives and how to be respectful, clean the house, do this, exactly, take care of household items, have kids, raise kids, and and uh, don't talk back to your husband. That's, that's <laughs> <laughs> Give a salute. Yeah, I know. Yes, sir. <laughs> I, clearly, I did not fit into that mold. And uh, I was, I think when I was 15, um, there was this ad, this little ad on the wall. That's what I'm saying. Like, you got to pay attention to the clues that the universe has for you. Yes. So there was this little ad on the wall about an exchange program called American Field Service. Hmm. And I was like, a year in the U.S. And I was like, oh. God, that is my ticket to freedom. But I didn't think that my family would let me do that because I thought, you know, my dad was conservative nonetheless. Yeah. And so I went home and I was like, I just thought I'll share this with you. I'm not sure if you guys really want me to do this or not. And my dad said, absolutely. Yeah. I was like, absolutely yes or absolutely no. And he goes, absolutely yes. Wow. Go for it. And so, were you surprised at that moment that he I, was actually? I, I was shocked because I, I would have had to go and live with an American family, and I wasn't even allowed to go and sleep over at somebody's house wow. when I was in Iran, let alone to come here and live in some family that I've never met yeah. or they had never met. Yes. And um, but I did it anyway, and and it was like it just it just unfolded so beautifully, and. Um, I was, there were 18 of us out of 800 people that had applied. So, so you, you, you applied, you've got your, your, par your parents' permission, mm -hmm. you're ready to go, and your mind is saying, okay, this is freedom, this is opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, are you saying I'm never coming back, or are you saying... I had decided I wasn't coming back before I had left. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you so know? you had, your, you had I, your plans. I had said, I had, it, it was really weird, because I think I was about, you know, we lived in, in London. Yes. Uh, when I was six months old till I was three. Not that okay. I remember any of it. I mean, very little of it. But um, I had always wanted to get um, out of that mold that I didn't fit into. Got it. I, I love Iran, and I love Iranian people, and I think they're beautiful, really, really rich culture. But I just didn't fit in uh, in, in that cons constricted kind of a yes. role model. Now, what about your friends? Like uh, friends that you had, I presume you had friends over there. But mm. Did they know you were doing this? Did they did they try to stop you or think, "Hey, are you doing this?" They, they no, they were jealous. They were jealous. <laughs> <laughs> and so take I take me. Yeah, no, I know, right? <laughs> it was. Oh God, I, I can't even begin to tell you. I think that was the inflection point in my life. Okay. From that moment on, my life completely changed. I came to the states, loved it, and I just. As I said, before I even came, I just I knew this was where I was supposed to end up. I remember I was like six, seven years old, and I kept telling my dad, can I please, please um, go and study abroad? And he goes, yes, of course. What, what were you, when you saw America, like, was it just the freedom, or was there something you saw on TV? Well, what, 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 yeah, um, we, wa we watched a lot of American television when okay. I was in Iran. And uh, I remember it was like a month before I came, we were watching this episode because it was called Love American Style. <laughs> and I'm really dating myself. <laughs> 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 and my dad was watching it, and I'm like frozen. I'm mm. like, holy crap, he's not going to let me go now. <laughs> and he goes, okay, no Love American <laughs> Style for you. And I was like, yes, yes, whatever you say. And so... Um, you know, I, I came here, and it wasn't like I went wild or anything. I was still mm. very conservative. I, I was brought up for like 15 years in a very conservative yes. family. We were not religious at all, but we were very traditional yeah. Iranian family. And little by little, I just realized, oh, my God, I, I can be me. And that was, that was the freedom. Wow. It wasn't about freedom to just go and do all kinds of wild stuff. It was the freedom that it was okay yes. to have opinions. It was okay to laugh out loud if you needed to. Um, it was just 
it was cool. Yeah. It was taking the mask off, basically, and then trying to redefine, which is something that I've been doing you know, pretty much all my life, uh, redefine. And then, but I have to say, Amar, even in the U.S., there are a lot of masks. Yes. They're just different masks, okay? Um, I think that people are, I think this human experience is about yes. what masks to wear when. It, it, it's true. You know, it, your story is similar, actually, of why I came to America, too. Yeah. It was, I was thinking, okay, well, everyone goes to a factory. Everyone does the same thing. Everyone wasn't thinking outside the box. I saw Dawson's Creek, and I said, hey, I want that life of Dawson's <laughs> Creek. <laughs> thinking that's how life is going to be in college. Obviously, right, it wasn't, right. but <laughs> it was the fantasy. Yeah. I came here, and it was, the first thing my counselor said to me was discernment of n knowing what people are... The face that you're gonna see from people may not be the face that you think that that was the first thing she said to me of when I got off the airplane. Wow. And and you saying about the mask and it, and it was it's true it's very very true. And I think to be honest with you, I, the the reason that I love what I do and I do work a lot. Yes. I mean I, I put a lot of hours in. I'm I'm working with about a hundred people, which is a lot. <clears throat> but what I love about it is when you get to know people and they take the mask off. There's this gonna get teary. But mm -hmm. there's this beautiful soul behind every yes. mask. And um, when they take it off, I see the beauty in the people. Yes. And then they just have this, this experience that, wow, this is, this is so good. It's almost like, I don't, I don't even you know how breathe. to experience it. Yeah, you can breathe. You can breathe. You, you yeah. no longer, you're not, nobody's holding you like that. Yes. You can just let go, and it's it's a little strange. I mean, uh, so every time I have a new um, member or you know that joins the group, at first they you know they come. It's so funny. I love it. The first meeting that they come, they're all dressed up in you know a three piece suit and and the and, and the tie and CEO, all that. CEO, I'm a yeah, boss, I'm right. a manager. And or 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 I'm going into a group of CEOs, so I need to be impressing that I fit in and all yes. that. And then they come and see that yeah they're coming with their Tommy Bahama shirt and you know comfortable yes. in their own skin yes. you don't you don't need to do that and then the second meeting they're just like hallelujah <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm ready to just you know and we call that concept the open kimono I yes. wish we could all live open kimono in you, life you, you don't find it that you know with like Instagram Facebook all these different things that we have nowadays mm -hmm. of when you see people smiling and you see people who are presenting themselves as unreal or a CEO and you got a guy sitting at a table with wads of hundreds just to show people, look how much money I have or look what I have. You, it's um, it's, it's a, it, that mask fantasy of what people believe they're seeing, which isn't real. And th doesn't that influence like what we think we need to be? Absolutely. I think social media has done <coughs> the most damage to, and, and I think it's almost like Vistage and social media are at war because yes. we're trying to, yes. you know, we don't need to look good. And we come, uh, you know, to the meeting trying to say, hey, I've really screwed up here or I really need help here or I don't know what I'm doing. And sometimes it's called the imposter syndrome yes. that, trust me, we're all infected with the imposter yes. syndrome because that was just the domestication that happens as we grow up to, uh, you know, uh, and there's a saying, fake it till you make it kind mm -hmm. of a thing. And there's some people that are really faking yeah. it and they haven't made it, but they keep faking yes. it. Bowling on a budget. Yeah, and, and <laughs> <laughs> I never heard that, is that a British term? No, 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 no. I got that from America. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and so, um, and I think my job and, and, and a tiny influence mm -hmm. that I have is to help people to just be okay. Yeah. Just be okay with who they are. You know, what I found amazing is, obviously you came from Iran, the group members are tough guys. I mean, they are some tough guys with tough egos, very wealthy, strong guys, mm -hmm. great guys. I mean, they think they're all great in their own ways. They're all yeah. great people. And you're trying to keep the group together, <laughs> which I find amazing. <laughs> and then I always think about, okay, you know, you came from Iran. Imagine how it was over there. And now you're here running the who we think we want to be to get that table, even me getting to that table, and I go, wow, I made it to the table. Mm. But to see you leading that table mm. is extremely impressive. And seeing you going toe to toe with these guys and mm. keeping everybody in check and keeping everybody stable and keeping the path going and directing what everyone should be doing, I think it's very powerful 
and very impressive. And I don't uh, like that. But I'm not coming from a place of power. That's the difference. But you earned you earned it just being in that Thank room you. of where you were and how you were presenting yourself in that room. I thought it was amazing. I thought I was amazed by it. Well, thank you for that. But let me let me share where that comes from because it doesn't come from um, putting yourself above yeah. anybody else. It comes from, in fact, having hit the bottom really, really, really hard. Um, I had the mask on. I had um, the perfect life, the perfect house. You know, kids, the husband, and you know all that other yeah. you know stuff that goes with it. And yep. it all came shattering down in a matter of a couple of months where the marriage ended, um, so the kids went to college, and the house sold, and I lost my job all within two months. So prior to that, you were on cloud nine thinking, this is life. I was not. On, I was okay. not on okay. cloud nine. Everybody else thought that That's, I was on okay, cloud nine. That's the difference. Okay. I was extremely wow. unhappy with every show that, you know, I, I I played the part, but I was playing it, you know, sort of like the faking till you make it. I was playing it so well that I didn't even know that I was playing a part. I was not in touch with my real self. And so it was, even though I had gone to all these self-development programs and what have you, but it wasn't until everything came crashing down that at a mature age, I had to literally move in with my mother, whom I didn't get along with at the time, wow. because I hit rock I had hit, rip, yeah, rock bottom. That's it. And, but I was broken on so many levels, spiritually, or, or I thought I was. But I read a book as um, I broke open. Okay. And um, that was the journey that prepared me. And I think if I hadn't done that, I would not have been able to be a good chair. If I hadn't hit the rock bottom. So what were you feeling? So you're, you're hitting rock bottom. What are you feeling now? You've gone to your mom's house. What's the feeling inside oh, you uh, from, yeah. from being of what you believe the household was being, trying to have that face in front of everybody in society? Because obviously the Iranian community is all judgmental, yeah, it's, Middle it's Eastern very, judgmental. Very. It's like, yeah. So, so where's your mind at when you're in your mom's house and you're, you're seeing uh, things go wrong for you? Like, are, are you blaming yourself? Are you blaming society? Are you blaming everybody else? Is, are you trying to, f what, what you, what, what you think, what's in your mind at that moment? To be honest with you, there were some really, really dark moments to the point that I no longer wanted to live. And I hate to say it, but I did contemplate how, how could I just end this life? I did not want to go on. And um, it was when I told my son, I, I kind of wanted to prepare my kids that, you know, I'm kind of done. And I'm Breathing. defeated, you know, all of that stuff. And he was so angry with me. He goes, Mom, I almost want to smack you for having said that. How, how dare you give up on yourself? Yeah. And I, I needed to hear that. It was almost like somebody had to just shake you mm. out of your self-pity kind of a thing or feeling defeated and, and, and all of that. And it's coming from a, a love of somebody who you wouldn't expect it, or you would expect it from, but unconditionally, like he's wanting you to be better, get but better. He was angry with me. And rightfully so. And and so I think his anger kind of forced me to... Um, and how old was he at that time? He's probably 24. Okay. You know? And, um, but I would tell you something, that what I thought was going to be the worst case, which was me moving in with my mom, um, ended up being the most beautiful year and a half of my life where she completely opened and she'd always she and I were always at odds with yeah. each other and fighting and not talking for years at a time and somehow her love allowed me to find myself yeah. with it was the unconditional love yeah. that I had always always wanted to have yes um, but she was not able to give. And then I guess when she saw me um, so down and defeated. Um, the softness came yeah. out. Yeah. Right? The softness came out. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, she's passed since, but. Um, oh. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
That was the most beautiful year of my life. It's the the mother's love and that moment is magical and I I relate to it. I I know how it feels. Um you had a gift that was there to carry you in the time of need that was what you needed in your life yeah. to have that connection that I think that a lot of us don't even get because up we don't realize our parents are going through t- hardship too. Yeah. And we don't get a chance to um to 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 understand that they go through hardship and it's not easy. Yeah, it's exactly. It's not easy. Exactly. And it wasn't and and honestly it's so hard for me to actually say that that was the best year of my life when I was totally I had nothing. I mean it was just like life was had come to a standstill and it was like at the bottom of the well. Yeah. But it was beautiful yeah. because I got to spend time with me. Yeah. I didn't have anything to impress anyone with. I um um I just went on walks and I tried to um I I went to a lot of um self development and um thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we never had to bust out the box recently so this is the first time we're busting out no. a box. <laughs> <laughs> and so um but it was during that time and I remember one one time my brother said with you not making money how can you afford to go to all these classes yes. your dog is giving me love right <laughs> oh that's so sweet wow that's effort yeah and so um and i said to him he goes you can't afford to be going to all these classes i said i can't afford not to because i had to um rediscover yes. life and redesign it and to be more authentic this time no more impressing anybody else it was all about um learning to love myself yes and i had nothing at the time and so uh, it was it was it was it was the most beautiful time of my life i have to say yeah no, that learning to love yourself is very hard and i don't think uh, even with myself there was a time where i was locked at home with two kids and i was trying to figure out who am I who am I supposed to be being in a big house thinking that that was what represented me right which it didn't represent me and then learning to enjoy myself and like they love myself sit there love myself and to make myself a better person for everybody else and that's why people say hey you you secluded yourself by secluding myself because I had to improve myself and that was exactly what I did it was like a sabbatical that I gave to myself yeah. for like a year and a half and I will tell you that one summer it was hot there was no air conditioning but i was reading i must have read 100 books in one summer i would stay up till 4 a.m. and i would read these books and it was all my training to become a chair i needed to learn that i can pull myself out of the darkness so that when i see one of my members going through a hard time i can extend a hand knowing that they can pull themselves out So if I hadn't done that how would I know that you can actually do that So so your purpose is shaping up to be a beacon of light for people in need is that Well thank you for for <laughs> calling me a beacon of I'm just thinking I'm just holding a candle yeah. for people to just guide them toward the journey that is more authentic Yes and I have come to a place where I think I might have said that to you at one time that I just hold a candle Yes and those that need to see it will see it and they will be attracted. There's some people that are not ready for it and I get that. We all go we are all different places in our journey. Mm-hmm. But those that are do come and I will tell you that that um so sometimes, you know, physically it can be challenging yes. um to be on my feet, you know, all day long and all that. But I go home and I'm so pumped yeah. just because imagine all these masks off and all these beautiful souls shining what an amazing yeah. experience that that's is amazing. right that's yeah. amazing so yeah okay we're going to pause for a second okay okay yeah, we're going to pause okay we're going <laughs> <laughs> to you got okay so she was getting a nap you know when i was crying you know what he did what? yeah she came running no she came and was licking my foot <laughs> yeah, <laughs> such a love it's like it's okay it's okay So at this moment Mary so you went to become the chair you become chair of the group. Mhm. Um 
you're leading everybody, you see the souls of the people in your group of who you've come to love. And I, I know that you have a great relationship with everybody in your group. Like I, I, I see it. The guys in that group are big people. Um, you're giving love to them, showing them the light, trying to guide them. Um, do you see in, in, in some of these guys do you, wh where they are and taking off that mask, when they go back to the normal job, how do how do you see them trying to deal with that? Like, because today I'm CEO, tomorrow I'm in the group, and I'm you know crying my eyes out to everybody, telling them how how painful it is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Business is tough. Mm -hmm. How do you how do you help transition these guys of who they need to be? Because I know that's an important part of your group of how the group is trying to be normal with each other or building even com commodity with with the, within the group. How do you help them transition in this? Transition to or being a boss yeah, from being, being a, real. To being real, to being a <laughs> boss and who you should be and who you shouldn't be. What do you, what do you tell people? Just, just be real. I mean, I, what I've noticed is the ones that are very successful yeah. are the ones that uh, go back to work and try to be real at work too. Um, because at the end of the day, the ones that are working for them are real human beings yes. with their own challenges. And if they see you as a human... Um, I think that helps them. I think they'll love you more. What about the ego, though, that grows? Like everyone thinks money, power, and I'm all of a sudden I'm becoming sh bigger and better. The ego that you see coming out. I don't see that. You don't see that in like some of these guys? I don't. Is there ever if I do, it's really rare. Okay, no, that's <laughs> not true. Okay. There, it is rare. I okay. do see that every so often, and then I just kind of observe them. I become the mirror for them to see okay. their own ego, so that they're like, "Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm being," you know. Okay. And if they are egotistical, they're not a good match for me. And so, it it just so then they they're not attracted to that group, or you know, because it it doesn't work. So, your normal life now. So you, you get through this. You get to the group. Where are you in life? What are you? achieve what, what are you trying to achieve now like what are you trying to show where where is your next step is it expand the group get more people do you do you want to be more involved in helping people obviously the the, the healing part of you of healing others is, is very well, prominent in front I, i'm you know it's it's an interesting journey i just we all have different roles you know mm -hmm. you know how it was yes. when you were in the group everybody comes there are some people that are guiding you sometimes they're more vulnerable my role is to kind of allow and bring that out in people to facilitate that but i'm growing every yes. at every meeting there's you know you may say something and i'm like oh yeah i totally get that yes. I've, I've got that and i think everybody else when when we share our challenges it's not all that unusual people feel the same thing you know people are like yeah i have that too even though they never really brought it Yes. to the table so oh, it's, it's hard to talk like when you're in that group you're saying oh is it just me but then you hear people oh, saying, oh that was me so, yeah exactly <laughs> and that's and that's when the trust starts coming in okay i can i can bring my guards down and so um i don't know it's 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 i don't have an agenda um i at this time i'm 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 really kind of as I was telling you earlier today, yeah. is just not resist and go with yes, the flow with of uh, what needs to happen. So I know there are, there are some people, there are some chairs that have an agenda, blah, blah, blah. They have to stick to that. Yeah. And and honestly, I don't even do that in my one-to-ones. Uh, I, when I do get together with uh, with the CEOs, and, and I just want to trust the process that whatever is supposed to be talked about um, we'll, we'll just show up. Like, yeah. even for today. Yes. I didn't know I was going to cry. <laughs> <laughs> that was not planned. <laughs> and and, um, and I actually didn't, I was not worried. I was not, you know, yeah. I just said, just let's just see, yeah, let's just see what will what will show up. You Trust know? the universe of why you even came here today. I, and because <laughs> it already knows, right? Yes. It's just, I was not, I was not privy to it prior to coming here. But it's it's such a good good thing to be able to trust. Yes. I think we're all so worried and um, wanting to control everything. God knows I'm, I'm the queen of control, too. <laughs> that's the and, Virgo in you. Oh, I know. How do you remember? Because <laughs> we're yeah, both Virgos. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. And so, uh, yeah, I, I like things just to be so. Yes. 
And um, they're not always that way. And when they're not, I'm like, huh, I need to be learning because yeah. I am the one that is resisting. I am okay. the one that's being stubborn. And so when I'm when I'm when I give in, it all works out so much easier yes. and better than what I would have planned on my own. Yeah. And so I think that's yeah, I mean, there are different lessons that come to me as I meet different people and their challenges, uh, or when I actually go through programs and trainings. Mm. Uh, one of the programs that I absolutely love is the Sedona Method, which is all yes. about, Sedona Method is, is a, everything that I've read kind of comes back to that. To me, mm. that is the most um, beautiful program about how to live life, is just not to take yourself so seriously is as it comes, can you be with what is and can you now let it go? It's mm. not, it's detachment from everything, which is kind of more of a Buddhist monk yes. type feeling is how could you enjoy everything that you have and everyone in your life and yet not be attached to it? Yes. Whether it's money, whether it's a love or a relationship or a house or what have you. Um, I think I think it's very hard though because I, I see like a lot of people believe worth is what we have, mm. so they collect off all these things and I have this and I'm driving this and I, I have this and and mm. and that they believe that that's where their well, worth come from worth well, comes yeah, from yeah 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 really good point and let me just share with you I have this most beautiful daughter who is an old soul and she's left the U S and you know just so sick of Southern California and and all the, you know, she's bling, in, bling. She's in Germany. Right she now. lives in Germany. That's right. And so she just was visiting uh, last week, and, you know, she goes, Mom, I, I, it's different over there. You're not all about what you do or what you have. Mm. People connect with one another. We get together for coffee for hours or have a drink or dinner or what have you. But it's people connecting. And I think I'm missing that here, yeah. to be honest. If I didn't have this job yeah. where I do connect, but which is still a, a work-related connection, even though I do see the beautiful souls behind all, <laughs> of, the, all of their names and, and titles and what have you. But um, I think we are starving for human connection. Yes. And the social media has, has, has really taken a lot of that away from us. We're just it, texting and putting pretty yes. pictures up there. It, it's like with birthdays. You know, it used to be a day where people used to call for birthdays. And now it's so convenient. Text, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Yeah. I get a reminder because yeah. my Apple phone tells me to text someone because it's their birthday. I know. And I'm literally a robot doing what the Apple phone is telling yeah. me to do. So I'm hoping that you'll call me when it's my birthday. <laughs> I'm going to call you. There'll be, there'll be some flowers. <laughs> That's beautiful. No, I think um, it is dangerous. And, and I don't know who I was talking to uh, last night who said that, um, and, and I don't know Marx at all, but yeah. he had um, actually anticipated that the, the, the use of technology, the advancement of technology will bring the human beings a lot of pain and challenges yes. because they just stop connecting. Yeah. Oh, I, I see this even with my son and he's using his phone and he comes alive when he's playing games and he's talking to other people. And now the the short the short bursts of energy that keep coming out of him where he's he needs to scroll on something right. and do something. Right. And he's turning into that or needing that. Yeah, uh, and it feels like it's missing, um, like the the interaction of going out or playing baseball, especially the lockdowns made it even worse. Oh yeah, I'm with that too. But what I have noticed, like with people, like they post something and then they're impatiently waiting to see how many comments yes. they got, how many yes. likes they got, how many you know, and if like they only got six, and it's like, what? Am I not popular anymore? Yeah. You know, no, the ones that like you are just as <laughs> miserable as yeah, you that's because exactly. <laughs> that's their life is yes. just looking through it's other true. people's lives you know so um uh i have um you, you know him um gus who is in our group yes. whenever we have a meeting he never brings his phone interesting to the meeting wow i did not realize that yeah so when i would have my one-on-ones with them he said i want to be here present and i don't want my phone so he would always leave it in the car 
which I thought, that is such a cool idea. Yeah, it is a cool idea. And sometimes it really kind of bothers me when I watch people, like, we're, we're processing somebody, and then they're on their phone. Yeah. No, it yes. can't wait. Yes. I know you're important, you are a CEO, but this person is opening their heart. They're talking about the pain or the challenge that they're yes. having. Please be present for one another. And yes. I think... I need to do that because I've been guilty of it myself. We have the same problem here when I'm having a meeting with managers and I see on their phone and I get it, they're trying to do their day-to-day -day operations right, and this right, is right. happening. But when we are having that moment of let's talk about strategy, let's talk about what we're going to do, are you doing a good job? And everyone's so distracted. But it's like a hobby. It's hard to walk around. I think there's a company now that gives you a fake phone because we need a <laughs> we need a phone in our hand just to feel good. I, I think it really exists. Surgically exists. removed this yeah. company. Yeah, and, 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 and they have great sales because people are buying these phones. Because are you serious? They, yeah, and we'll pull that up. Uh, we'll, they'll put it on the screen. But, uh. but there's, a, there's a company that they're walking around, they sell these fake phones, and you actually feel good that you have it, and now you feel you've got something in your hand. No way. Yeah, and it, it, it's, our brains, are needing that well you know that's really interesting you should say that because i used to smoke cigarettes and then when i quit it was so awkward like if i went to a restaurant and i was having a drink and i didn't have something in my other hand i was like what do i do this is so awkward and finally i'm you know i'm yeah. over that but you you may be right because physiologically we have become um creatures of conditioned yeah. yeah and so it's really dangerous. I thought with the cigarette, when you're needing a cigarette, you need to get, go for chopsticks. <laughs> I know, or something, you know, or a pen, or something in your hand, you know. But it, it was it was breaking the habit was not just the nicotine. It was the physiological physical. of yes. lighting it up and holding it and, and blowing the smoke and what have you. Thank God I, I'm done with that. It's, it, it's weird that, you know, like uh, going on to that, that creatures of habit, but it's when my phone says I have to call my mom at this time. My phone is telling me because I do it on a certain time every day. I would call a specific time or you, time to park your car over here. And the phone is predicting where you're going. And I don't know if you see. Oh, I know. It was scary <laughs> when it does like, that. It was like, when, like, you know, there was a time that I was going to Laguna Beach quite a bit. And then, then I stopped going. And then my phone, I would get in the car. It's like 10 minutes to Laguna Beach. I was like, no. Yeah, it's, it's like, honey. You know, yeah. how did you know? Well, it's Saturday. You usually go there, you know? Yeah. Well, they say with all these algorithms and the phones and technology, it's all predicting what we're doing. Which is really kind of scary. Yeah. I wish it would predict good stuff, <laughs> but it's sort of like, it's just, but I wonder if it's predict, not only just predicting, but also is it getting you to go there? Yes. You know, is it, is it, um, it's kind of a mind control in a way. Yes. Um, that's like. I, I was talking to a friend of mine about um, going on a vacation, and uh, we, were, we had looked at lists, and Four Seasons was on it. I am not kidding you. I don't get a lot of stuff I, you know, from Four Seasons. But the minute I, t I had my, um, um, my email opened, yeah. There was an advertisement up. from Four Seasons Hotel. I'm like, oh yeah. my God, this is really Th scary. This is where the phones are listening to us. They <laughs> are. I mean, well, I mean, it, you know, we had looked at a um, list of some hotels and, um, and, and that just kind of came up. And I was like, this is, this is really kind of weird. This is a little too invasive. You, you know, I was looking at uh, buying um, a grill for our semi truck. Uh -huh. A grill. A grill uh -huh. because we have an yeah. accident and we have a grill that protects it. They use it for deers and protection. I was looking at it on my phone. When I get back to my computer and I think somehow the phones are computer, <laughs> and it comes up with grills for <laughs> semi trucks that people would not normally look at in a normal day because I'm looking at these giant ones that they have actually in Utah oh, well, to, to protect from the deers and stuff. So it really is invasive. And it, 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 your mind, it's like when I wake up in the morning, you know, before it was, okay, I look, see what's happening on my phone, emails repetitively at six o'clock in the morning, I'm, I'm checking my emails, the stock market. How's Bitcoin doing? How's this doing? And, and then I, Bitcoin comes up. Yeah, and oh, everything everything is very predictable. And it's like we, we keep going to our phones to do this. Well, um, are we being, yeah, I mean, they, they, it's a mind control. Yes. And I, what was I, I was, uh, I was listening to Oprah um, a couple of days ago. On, and it was, you know, there was, she's written a book with another doctor. And it's about, um, and she, Oh, no, I know what it was. It was The Mastery of Self by Don Miguel uh, Ruiz Jr. And it talked about the domestication that happens on this planet Earth. And obviously it's, it's stronger um, in some parts of the world than other. But it's there, you know. Yes. And, and it, our parents domesticate us to with 
reward or punishment. We yes. go to school, we get domesticated to behave a certain way, to yes. sit still, to do our homework, even if you know we think it's stupid, yes. whatever. Then we come to work is, well, if you, you remember, I don't know if you remember, you're too young, but I mean, back in the days, <laughs> it used to be that if you came really early and stayed really late, that was your boss would really approve of you. Yes. Nowadays, I think the new generation is like, no, I don't want to do that. I, I have a life. I want to go home yes. and see my baby. I want to see my wife or husband and what have you. I want to have a personal life. But you got domesticated into certain behaviors. And I think that's where we have lost ourselves. We don't know authentically what it is that we want. Yes. I don't, I, I, I'll, I'll be the first. I don't really know no. exactly what would be the perfect life? I'm just kind of going through life, just trying to... Uh, day by yeah, day, yeah. this is right, this is wrong. Where the ocean is taking me, I just follow the waves. Right? Well, yeah, kind of, I know, sounds really bad. <laughs> I mean, you tell me I'm going against the waves. I'm like, hey, go with the waves. <laughs> well, going with the wave is, is a little bit different. Not resisting life is a different thing than just kind of going through life haphazardly. Yes. Okay? Go with life with your eyes wide open and just recognize, am I resisting what's showing up or not? When you feel the pain, there is, um, there is Abraham Hicks that had this beautiful um, um, CD that I love. It's called The Vortex. Okay. And that's how you know. It's like your, the intelligence in your being knows what is right and what is yes. not. And the, uh, the way you know if it's the right thing or not is tune in, not out. Yes. Tune into yourself. For example, if you're thinking, um, like when you asked me to come here, um, it, w it was, yeah, totally. Yeah. It was, it, it was, it was like, it felt good yeah. actually to, to, to say yes, you know yeah. what I mean? And so I think sometimes we just need to tune in to the knowledge and the intelligence that's within each of us. Yes. We are so cut off from our own selves Yes, that um, that makes it hard to make a decision. And, and that's like trusting that inner voice. Exactly. I, that's, that's really why I yes. believe it. So it's that inner voice saying, this is the right move. This is why you, you came to America. This is why I came to America. This is why I started a business. This is why I did this. And just trusting that this is the path that we're supposed to take when it happens. But most of us have lost that connection yes. to our own self. Again, part of the domestication of the yes. of planet Earth. Do do this and this do is this. right. Yeah, yeah, fit yeah, yeah. in the box, yeah, fit yeah, in the yeah. box, stay at home. And then even, even if you don't want to go to work at 5 a.m. to impress your boss, you feel obligated. God knows I did that. When yes. I was working for IBM, it was like, it, it was almost like they were measuring someone's commitment and, yes. and upward mobility as to how early you came to work. Yes. I was exhausted and I would just still show up at, you know, 6 or 7 a.m. so that I could be seen as someone that is promotable. Yes. The more I got promoted, the more I hated my job. Yes. <laughs> and to me, to be honest with you, if it weren't for the fact that I was under so much stress that my back gave out and I could not walk, I could not sit, it was at that time out of just necessity that I had to quit working for the man, if you will. And I, I took I took a year off just, you know, nursing my back, yeah. but I said, there's got to be a better way. And so the reason I went back to school was so I could help other people not go through the pain I did because mm -hmm. it broke my back. Yeah. And so I started studying... Um, you know, industrial psychology, organizational psychology. And the byline for the company that I started was making work a better place. Yeah. We spent so much time at work. And yet, I talked to, and, and, and I talked to so many people that are in my groups that some of them are CEOs, but some of them are the ones that work for CEOs. Yeah. There's so much pain, and that really bothers me. We should be going to work feeling yeah. excited and energized, but we're not. So how can we more make work a better place? I'm doing my my job, which is helping my CEOs create an environment and, and an organization that is love loving, yes. you know, and um, you know we 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 shy away from the word love, but no love make make it a love fest at work, yes. you know, make people want to come because it's so enjoyable, you know, yes. um, and so. 
Yeah, it was it was painful, so I, the, I quit. Th th this portion of what we're trying to do here, we're trying to do something very similar. What you're describing right now is what I'm trying to bring here, like trying to redo things, trying to make it nice, make people feel happy when they walk in, make it smell good, make them feel happy, make people realize that being together is where we feed off each other's energy. And that's really what we're trying to turn our, our place into. It's a, It's been a, a work in pro progress, but it's it's coming about now. Like the timing felt so right. So tell now. me, tell me what <laughs> uh, what what got you to 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 do that? Well, I, I felt like the, the thing you had mentioned about seeing people um, being miserable coming in and people saying, "Oh, I see a guy down the street," because everybody has this Google fantasy in their minds that. Uh, when you see on TV, you see Google and you see those big balls and a parrot flying through the room and everyone says, wow, I want to work there. <laughs> so, but seeing that where people were so indulged by that, even by names, thinking uh, in the beginning, everybody wanted to work for Amazon, thinking that Amazon was the greatest thing on earth because Amazon's a big company, but they go there and they literally are running alongside the machines. So I wanted to make it so that people enjoy coming here and when they're sacrificing their life to be here, that they get to take something from here. And this, we spend more time with our colleagues than we do with our own families. We Absolutely. go home, we yeah. sleep. But when we come here, uh, I want them to feel that they're going to be in an environment they enjoy being in. And we weren't financially ready for it back then, but we're ready for it now. And that transition is happening right now. But, but I guess my question was, what was the inflection point for you to just say, okay, this is what I want to do. Because I think that's really critical, is um, every once in a while we hear the, 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 the voice that says, I want to do this, and then yeah. we get lulled into, well, that's not how I'm supposed to be. People are supposed to be productive and la, 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 la. But what was it? How did you wake up um, to that? I think it was just, I care for the people here. I care for every single person here and I want everybody to be happy. I want them to come here and have that smile on their face. I want them to enjoy what they're doing because sometimes our work is not pleasurable. Mm. Um, I just I, I just felt it from people when I'm seeing someone struggling and then they had to run away and they were ashamed to tell me that they couldn't handle the stress and I wasn't there because no one told me. I wanted to, sh I wanted to make it so that they enjoy being here and, and us having an environment that's friendly allows them to deal with the stress that they're facing. You know what this reminds me of? Um, the fish market in Seattle. Okay. I, have you have you no, read no. their story? Oh, you've got to read. They have a YouTube program which they talk about. I mean, probably can't think of too many other more disgusting things than 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 cleaning fish and the yeah. smell that goes with it and all that. But they have turned in into this amazing experience where people just show up all pumped and. But it was that, that what you're describing here yes. is like, how do you make that um, for anybody who wants to do that? Um, I have a couple couple uh, suggestions. One is watch the fish market story, okay, which is really amazing. It talks about how they created that, that culture that people are waiting in line to get a job there wow. in a fish market wow. that smells icky and you have to get up really early in the morning to do it and then there was um a, a movie that i saw by michael moore um where to invade ne next and to me that was sort of like oh, i don't know if i want to watch that if yeah. it's it, I, I thought it was going to be about war and all that stuff and it wasn't <laughs> it was he went around the world and interviewed and learned about the culture of organizations in Italy, in Germany, in Sweden, in, in different parts of the world, and how they treat their people, how they um, manage life. Yeah. And it was absolutely, I, I really think it's a must-see for everyone. Um, it's yeah, gonna really powerful. Yeah, I'm gonna look yeah. Into so how long have you lived in California? Since 89. And what do you like about California? <laughs> Besides the taxes, I know you enjoy the taxes. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> and um, I, yeah, it's really interesting. Um, I, I would say I love the weather. I, I'm not a cold weather person because I used to live back east. And you're yeah. a beach person, right? You like the no, beaches? No, I'm not a beach person. Uh, I do enjoy water. I think I was a mermaid in my past life, okay? <laughs> and uh, don't tell me they're not real. So <laughs> I think I was. And... Um, I, I love, I love the the beautiful uh, landscape. I think. But I think there's something for everybody here. Like you go to the mm. mountains, you go to oh, the beach, you go. And, to and I'll tell you what else I like. It's a melting pot like no other place. Yes. 
So the fact that I can see a lot of people from my own country, there are people from everywhere. And so I used to live in Ohio, and I really stood out like a sore thumb. Um, no, um, so we accept differences. Yes, you know uh, a lot more here. I the, think the the one thing for me was the melting pot. That yeah. was the biggest thing over here that I I like about California. Like I like mm -hmm. walking down the street and feeling very normal. But I will tell you that I find people from the East Coast. Uh, or the Midwest, much more authentic and real yes. than the people in California. I agree. I, you know, so usually when I meet people that I really connect with, I find that, oh, they're from somewhere else yes. uh, originally. Not that I'm saying the people in California aren't, but I think the, the Hollywood of California is has made it, you know, has made it difficult for people fancy. to be real. Yeah, yeah. no offense. I, I do find that the people in California are more laid back compared to mm. the East Coast. I feel like the East Coast people are very punchy, very uh, quick to want to get things done. Maybe the impatience uh, is there. And this is the people I deal with like when, when we're working. But I find that they are more punchy and needing stuff immediately versus the Californians very, I'm, get, I'm working on to get it done. <laughs> <laughs> Must be the weather. Be <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and so actually one of the things that I want to do is I don't know when, but I would love to go and live for six months at a time in places like Portugal. Because oh. I made a quick visit there, and the people were so loving and wonderful and authentic and friendly. I want to go and live in Italy. I want to go and live in southern France, not necessarily Paris, but um, Turkey, which is another yes. favorite of mine, and, and just experience... Um, what brings joy and how can I bring that back to the States? Like almost like a go shopping, like you go to buy all these ingredients to come home, make a soup. How can I, what can I learn from Portugal and Spain and Italy and France and, and Turkey and how could I bring all of those here and make that a part of our life too, the good parts yeah. of it. Would you ever go back to, like, to vi do you ever go to visit Iran? I haven't been there since 1976. Is there anything inside you that ever has a desire to go back there? To visit? Um, See the country? I, I kind of would, especially the northern part where my mom was from. It's so beautiful, so lush. It's just south of Caspian Sea, and it's very, very wet. It rains a lot, and it's very green, despite of what everybody thinks that we're all Camels everywhere. <laughs> and, and actually, and, that's the perception people have. They oh, think camels yeah. and donkeys. And yeah. and there's, but there's well, we have those too. <laughs> I mean, we have donkeys and, and what have you. But actually, Tehran has people that have gone there, they said you won't recognize it. It's become this huge hustle and bustle, extremely. So, th so there's a lot of extremes in, in, in Tehran, for example. You're either very rich or very poor. Um, I would like at some point to go for a visit. Yeah. and um, But as a single woman, I can't go alone. Yeah. I can't get a hotel room by myself. Yeah. yeah, so I would have to take one of my kids or yeah. something. Miriam, I want to thank you for uh, your time here. It's been very uh, enlightening. Thank um, you. And I appreciate you coming out. And thank you very much. Thank you for asking me. It was absolutely <laughs> wonderful to be with you again and uh, to just have this hour together. Thank you. I really <laughs> appreciate it. That's great. Beautiful. Subliminal, they can call me cocky, but no, I'm original. If they really wanna get it, they can come and get it. I be serving scoops, ayy, on call my loops, ayy. If you're watching Swiss B boxes, hit the replay. I be serving scoops, ayy, on call my tunes, ayy. If I'm just tripping on this beat, what the fuck about a fee, ayy? By the way, I still do this photo show. Ay.